Thank you, Michael, and thank you to the organizers for the invitation to speak here today. Um, when they initially asked me to do a presentation, I asked them if I can go a bit wider and this transfer pricing, because if you're a multinational enterprise that has cross-border related party transactions, you also encounter other things like withholding taxes and double tax treaties and objections and appeals. So if you'll forgive me, we're going to take a slight detour off the transfer pricing highway and then after tea we can get back onto that highway again. But before we, uh, yeah, in, in terms of what we're going to discuss this morning, we're going to touch on regulatory approvals and the effect thereof and then uh, say something about the reduced rates in DTAs the application of Article 7, the business profits article. Uh, we're going to discuss something about the deduction for shrinkage. Shrinkage is stock theft. <coughs> and then move on to tax audits and objections. And give you some practical tips of what, what we've seen, what works and what doesn't work. And uh, then talk about reverse VAT. And in closing, I want to make some final comments about the use of software tools and how that can help one in your business. But before we get onto that, just three quick slides about our business and what we do. ShopRite Group operates 1,900 stores in 15 countries on the African continent. It's Africa's largest retailer and employs 123,000 people, of which some 16,000 are employed outside of South Africa. In 2014, it turned over of 102 billion rand and a trading profit of 5.7 billion. Uh, our current presence in Africa include uh, obviously South Africa and then Angola, Botswana, Ghana, Lesotho, Madagascar, Malawi, Mauritius, Mozambique, Namibia, Nigeria, Swaziland, Uganda, Zambia and the DRC. DRC is the latest. These are some of our brands that you may recognize. ShopRite Checkers, USAVE, CompuTickets, House and Home, Medirite. Etc. Okay. And this is what our business is about. It's uh, food and non-food retail. It's a picture taken about a, in a store about three weeks ago. That new store that opened in Zambia called Twin Palms. That's what we do. Okay. Now, in terms of regulatory approvals, let's assume, for argument's sake, you're a South African company, and <coughs> you have. Uh, related party transactions with your subsidiaries up in Africa. You charge royalties, you charge interest on loans, you sell goods, or you um, provide services, support services, administrative services, etc. And come the end of the financial year, raise the invoice and off to the bank you go and you want to make payment. But there's a problem. Central bank approval, reserve bank approval. Your bank tells you that you cannot make payment or you cannot make payment for the full amount. And um, as you may know, Angola, Nigeria, Malawi and Mozambique has got reserve bank or exchange control regulations. Now in Angola, they are particularly uh, pedantic about this. And if you want to pay a loan back from the part you extended the loan funding, you have to have a certificate of capital importation. Otherwise, they will not allow you to repay the loan and the capital. When you sell trading stock, merchandise, you have to have a customs clearance document or DU. Without that, I promise you, they will not allow you to make payment. Uh, for service contracts, there are some specific rules, and we'll get onto that a bit later. But if I can give you one tip, and that is get a good bank to help you. It makes all the difference. Some are better than others. I can't advertise, but definitely helps. For the technical fees, if say for example your South African company provides administrative services or support services to your subsidiary in Africa, <coughs> if the value of that contract exceeds a million dollars over a three year period, then you need prior approval from the BNA. That's the central bank, Banco de Nacional de Angola. And quote, quote me on the pronunciation. But you also need a certificate from the Ministry of the Economy and you have to prove that the contract was stamped by them and it was loaded on the CINOC database. Without that, they will not allow you to...